So here's what you want to look for with a string player. And really this goes with any musician. Um, make sure that they can play in tune so that you're not spending a lot of time on the back end, you know, auto tuning in post or cutting and pasting or taking a lot of the same take because something's off, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that is always um, kind of a, a, something to keep in mind when you're thinking of hiring strings. Um, also think about how much strings you are going to be recording. And if you're gonna be hiring someone um, by the hour or by the track or song, mm. right? Mm. Um, if you're hiring someone who's really experienced, um, you could probably just hire them by the song and they can go in and knock it out in like 30 minutes to an hour per song, depending on how many lines and overdubs you want them to be doing. Um, if you're hiring someone who maybe strings aren't their first instrument, maybe they're multi-instrumentalist and, you know, this is uh, a secondary or, or further on down the line for them. Um, and they just happen to like have a cello and know some cello. Um, you might be wanting to pay them by the hour for their time. If they're going to be in there for a while, you know, mm -hmm. trying a lot of things over and over to get the right take. So, Again, it's just like any other musician. You, if you're going to hire a drummer who plays a lot of instruments or maybe they haven't played drums for that long and you ask them to go into a session and lay down a drum track and it's, you know, not as in the pocket as you want it or, you know, they don't have the right equipment that you want and so you're trying to, like, work around all of these kind of barriers, that's just going to take more time and it might mean more time that you're paying a, um, your engineer, your producer, your mixer to work it in post. Mm -hmm. So it pays off to, the, you let the, the better the player, generally the less time it takes fixing stuff in post. Generally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and talk to your person beforehand, you know, get kind of an idea of their skill set. If they're really comfortable improvising and you're not super comfortable writing a part, but you kind of know what you want, um, the more that you can give them beforehand, the better. Um, if they're not super comfortable with improvising, but you want that player um, because you like their sound or because maybe their rates fit your budget, um, you might need to do some more work on your end to prepare the session so that you know exactly what you want them to do. Yeah. So what's the time where like you, you want to wing it? Like, um, I mean, I did a session uh, a few days ago, actually, um, where the, the guy kind of, he knew what he wanted, he could sing it, um, and he knew where in the song he wanted it. That's kind of huge, actually. If you yeah. have, like, a road map and you know where you want the strings in your song, that's huge. And he also kind of knew the texture or the feel that he wanted for the strings. He knew all of those things, but there were no written out charts. Um, but given those qualifications, okay, I want it in this part. I want it to kind of rise and ascend. And I want long tones that are connected. And um, I want it to follow this guitar line. That's, nice. that's just as good as having it written out. Nice, right? yeah. For, for someone who is comfortable playing off the page. He knew that I was comfortable playing off the page. Um, if I were a musician who was not comfortable playing off the page, he might need to have a friend write something out for him describing those things. Um, but regardless, I went in, I won it, but I had so many descriptive um, things that he was hearing that it took very little time and everyone was happy. Knowing what you want, totally. Knowing where you want strings so that you don't just have a player coming in and I'm like, where do, where do you, do you know where you want strings? No, just play over the whole thing. Okay, well, there's like an infinite number of possibilities for me to do. Yeah. <laughs> and there's infinite uh, ways for me to play it not the way that person was hearing it. 
And it just takes a whole lot longer to like nail down like, well, what did you like about that? What did you not like about that? Okay, let's do it again, you know? So the more you know about what you want in your head, where you want me in the song, where, what kind of texture you want, what's the purpose for it? Do you want me in the background? Do you want me to solo? Um, do you want me in the mid range or the low range or way up high? Those things all make a huge difference and can make things go a whole lot faster. The big, the big news is, is like the big opening up for Andrew Bird, right? At the end of this month. Yeah, yeah. That's a big one. It's huge, yeah. So that's with Betsy Gantz's band called The Sun Punchers. Um, Great group from Phoenix. Um, It's been around for a long time. I've done some string sessions on their records, and now um, I'm a part of the band, permanent member. And, um, yeah, we're opening for Andrew Bird and Iron and Wine, which is so crazy I can't even explain how. Super awesome. I know, Andrew yeah. Bird, it's like, so. it's the real deal. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 